So recently you saw the images of brothers in Al-Aqsa with their hands tied behind their back and their legs shackled on the masalla, on the floor. The Israeli soldiers stormed in while they're praying and tied them up. And a message came back because some of them were there during the time of Salah. So imagine they asked a fatwa. What's the ruling? When your hands and legs are tied. When you can't face the Qibla, even though you're in Qibla al-Ula. When you can't make wudu. When you can't make takbirat al-ahram. When you can't make ruku' when you can't make sajda, what's the hukum? Hal yajuz hadis salah? Can you pray like this? Has anybody ever asked this question before? So I'm here to tell you, I already know the answer. Because my first prayer in US military custody was with my hands tied behind my back my legs facing forward with a, sh a strap across them and a hood over my head. They took me into this airplane with many other brothers, forced us down and tied us down in the way I've described. The sounds of screaming prisoners, the sounds of the engine, roar of the engine, the sounds of the dogs that's barking at us, the sounds of American soldiers swearing at us in words they can barely pronounce in Arabic, in Urdu, in Pashto, in Farsi. And then next to me, when I'm seated, there's a brother, he speaks to me. He says, Akhi, assalamu alaikum. I say, wa alaikum assalam. I can't see him because I have a hood over my head. And so does he. He says, Akhi, min aina ant? I say, I'm in Pakistan. I asked him, where are you from? He said, I'm in Libya. And then he says words that will shock you to the core. Because in his mind, in my mind, I thought, are they going to kill us? Are they going to take us to a dungeon? Will I see my family again? But in his mind, he said, Akhi, Hal Salaita Salat al Maghrib. Adunnu, Waqt Salat al Maghrib qad dakhal. He's saying that to me over all of that noise. Have you prayed Maghrib prayer? Because I think the time for Maghrib prayer has come. And I thought, subhanallah, at this time I forgot la dhuhr, wa la asr, wa la maghrib. I forgot everything. I just thought life or death. But this guy is thinking, inna salata kanat al mu'minina kitab al mawquta. That's what he's thinking. So I say to him, akhi, anta ali yasar, fatasalli. You're on the left, lead the prayer. So how is the prayer? No qibla, no takbir al ahram. No ruku, no sajda, no wudu, none of the basic arkana salah, none of them. And to top it, when I say to the brother, Fasalli, an American soldier comes and he puts a knife to my neck. He puts a knife in my, on my neck like this. And he says, if you speak again, I'll slit your throat. At this point, the brother, he says, Allahu Akbar. And we began our first prayer in American military custody. The knife went away and we remained. And we continued to pray until he did. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So you see, when I say I know what the ruling is, can you pray without wudu? Can you pray without all of those basic arkan of salah that you know of the ones that you just did here right now my answer is yes yes you can we are the ummah of whom allah azza wa jal says alladheena yadhkuruna allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim that's our faith that's who we are standing sitting lying down doesn't matter and so let me tell you about somebody else an even worse story there's a man, his name is Zain al-Abideen Muhammad. 
nicknamed Abu Zubaydah. He's been held in Guantanamo for 21 years. No charge, no trial, no court, no jury, no defense, no prosecution, no judge. 21 years. Abu Zubaydah is a Palestinian. Stateless. He has no nationality. He is stateless. He grew up in Ramallah throwing stones at the occupiers 50 years ago. And still his home and that land, as you can see, day by day is occupied either by the settlers or the Israeli army or the IDF, still to this day. And as you know, every year in Ramadan, they encroach upon Al-Aqsa to test what are the Muslims going to do. So this is Abu Zubaydah, he's from there. And he was tortured in a whole series of sites, including Thailand, Morocco, Mauritania, and crucially, three European nations, Lithuania, Poland, and Romania. The CIA tortured him using an ancient technique that was used during the Spanish Inquisition, Mahakamat al-Taftish, that was used on Muslims to check to see are they still Muslims or not. And that's when they pour water into your nose and into your mouth and tie your hands and legs and make you feel like you're drowning even though you're not submerged underwater. He was subjected to this waterboarding technique over 83 times. I want you just to imagine if you take a glass of water and pour it into your nose, just for three seconds, it goes straight to your brain. So imagine that sustained gallons poured into your face, into your nose for hours. Despite all of this torture, Abu Zubaydah to this day, no charge, no trial. In fact, he's been awarded by the governments of Lithuania, Poland and, Lith and uh, um, Romania compensation, almost half a million dollars because of what the CIA did to him. But he's still in Guantanamo. So Abu Zubaydah Zain al Abidin in 2019-2020 did a series of self-portraits of torture. He drew pictures of himself and what happened to him. And there are many techniques that were used against him, but there's one in particular where he describes and draws how he is in a box, a coffin, tabut. And in this coffin, they placed him, the CIA placed him naked, no clothes. They drilled some holes in the top so he could breathe. And every now and then they pour in some water so he can drink. And he's left in this coffin for days. Abu Zubaydah is a practicing Muslim, like you guys. So he also wants to pray. Everything else to the side, Salah. He wants to pray. So he asked them, can I pray? I need to pray. They say, sure, you can pray. Pray where you are, in your coffin. But he says, I also need to wash. I need to go to the bathroom. They say, use the bathroom where you are, in your coffin. So now think, I want you to think now. Remember, we only value things when they've been taken away from us. You value your parents after they've gone. You value your age, your youth, after you've become an old man. You value your wealth after you've lost it. You value your health after you've lost it. And you value your freedom after it's gone and taken from you. So Abu Zubaydah, he needs to make ghusl. He needs to make wudu. He needs to wear clothes. He needs to face the qibla. He needs to stand up. He needs to raise his hands. He needs to make ruku. He needs to make sajda. He needs to make taslim. And he can't do any of those things. Not a single one of those things. 
But Abu Zubaydah performs his salah. And can you imagine the salah of somebody in that situation? Do you think their salah is better or ours? Look at the beauty of our religion. Those brothers who've got their hands tied behind their back on the floor with their, hands, with their legs shackled and guns pointing to them, they're praying in Al-Aqsa, but Al-Aqsa is not theirs. Al-Aqsa means the furthest mosque and it is the furthest. And in the same way, Abu Zubaydah is in a place called Guantanamo, where the first condition to be a prisoner, the first condition is that you must say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah.